super excited to be here, part of this awesome breakout group. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to share with you some exciting new results uh, from our group, looking at how we're using nanopore sequencing to identify epigenetic control points in maize or corn, um, and then using this to make major improvements on predictive breeding models. All right, so first off, uh, yeah, why does this matter? Um, so our current agricultural system is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, but also at really high risk from the effects of climate change. So that's a really bad combo. Um, and for this reason, it's super important that we develop new platforms that enable breeding new varieties that are really resilient and high yielding. So first going to start out with a little background, kind of what's genomic prediction in crops and how are we looking to improve it before getting into methods and some results. So traditionally, one of the largest problems in plant breeding has been speed. Um, you know, classically, plant breeding's involved measuring huge numbers of traits of thousands of plants in a field environment, uh, taking this data and using it to make decisions on which lines you want to cross with which other lines to hopefully make a new and improved variety. Um, like I said, this was super slow and really expensive. And so more and more groups have turned to using genetic prediction models where they, you know, grab a single leaf tissue, sequence this at a set of loci that are known to play a role in controlling trait variation, and then use that genetic data to decide which plants they want to cross with which other plants. So this it sounds great, um, but is really highly dependent on that model being accurate. Um, and sadly, for a lot of agriculturally relevant traits, um, our models currently can only explain about 50% or less of that variation using SNPs and even incorporating indels into those models. Uh, so this is just kind of really slowing us down by having this lower accuracy, reducing the pace of advancement of new crop varieties. So we're looking to improve these models by incorporating epigenetics into them. Um, and so, you know, lucky for us, uh, we kind of realized we were looking to capture a bunch of genetic variants, including structural variation in different corn varieties, but also interested in getting a sense of methylation variation. And Oxford Nanopore provides that with one sequencing run, which was amazing for us. So once we realized this, um, we decided to kind of go ahead with this project where we were going to assay methylation in all three cytosine contexts, CG, CHG, and CHH methylation in a couple hundred different varieties of corn to look for associations with traits that we care about. Okay, so how do we do this? Okay, so lucky for us, um, there's a ton of great publicly available resources for corn, tons of publicly available phenotype data, but also publicly available SNP genetic data. So we identified a couple hundred lines where they have really high quality data, sourced some seed for those lines, grew them in our growth chambers, and sequenced them on a Promethion. Um, ended up with about 202 samples uh, where we had you know, high quality data, read depths of around 10x, uh, nice long reads, at least long enough for us, around that 12KB range, which allowed us to map to pretty repetitive regions of the genome, and used the Dorada super accurate model to quantify methylation at all positions across the genome. Once we had that, then it was kind of like the exciting part for me as a data scientist. Um, we kind of got to build on this publication of our groups last year uh, to basically develop a platform that allows us to scan the whole genome to identify cytosines where there's a high correlation between percent methylation at a cytosine and a trait that we care about. And so we did this for 24 different traits. Um, this kind of, what that produces is something like what's shown there as an EpiGWAS scan. And so there, each of those peaks represent a collection of cytosines in a certain area of the genome where there's a high relationship between methylation and the given trait. Um, once we had this, then we developed a machine learning framework where we basically took those peaks, fed them into that, and built a model to use that epigenetic data to predict trait variation. Um, at the same time, we did kind of a classic genetic approach using a GWAS scan to build the genetic model before incorporating them together into what we call a hybrid model. So what did we learn from all this? 
So this top plot here looks kind of like the one on the previous slide. Uh, this is showing some real data. And this was probably like the most exciting moment for me when we saw this first kind of epi Manhattan plot and saw a number of these really strong peaks going to that red or highly statistically significant category um, of regions where methylation really correlated highly with corn cob weight, a trait we really care about. Um, so then we kind of took those significant peaks fed them into this, what we call this Mars machine learning framework, and built a model that ended up including six of these different peaks into it, and then kind of used those six peaks to identify associations between methylation and that trait, build the whole model together. Um, and that's kind of what you see on the bottom right there, what the relationship between methylation on the x-axis and cob weight on the y-axis looks like at some of those peaks. So for that same example, um, our, we ended up building a genetic model that included 11 terms in it. This was nine SNPs that were already publicly available, but also two new indels that we detected using nanopore sequencing. Um, and then we also built this epigenetic model that explained 46% of the variation. And then we combined those together, and in this machine learning framework, built a hybrid model that went from 39% in just the genetic model up to 58% in our hybrid model, so a solid increase. That was one trait. Um, we, I said we did this for a bunch. Um, here's an example of those traits and how much improvement we saw going to hybrid models. Um, and you know, it was really exciting to see for a lot of these stress response traits in particular, um, we saw really big improvements by incorporating epigenetic data. Um, lodging jumps out here. That's kind of like the physical strength of a plant, basically how much energy it takes for it to get tipped over and the stem or the roots to come out. Um, that actually, we're seeing a large epigenetic component to that. Also, virus resistance, that kind of stuff. Um, well, it's, it's worth noting that some traits like branch density, 100 kernel weight, showed you know, very minor and maybe not even quite statistically significant increases. But the vast majority looked great. So then we wanted to say, OK, like, where are these epi peaks in the genome? We found they tend to lie in pretty diversity poor regions of the genome compared to GWAS peaks. Um, and that many of them were in quite repetitive, kind of complex regions of the genome. Um, and these would be really hard to detect using short read sequencing. So I think one of the major region, reasons that a lot of these hadn't been picked out before is because people have been using whole genome by sulfide sequencing and short reads, missing out on a lot of this super valuable information. Um, we also found that a lot of these peaks were close to genes, and that when they were close to genes, there was often a correlation between methylation at our epi peak and expression of that nearby gene. So here you have an example of one epi peak near one gene. Um, and you can see that the varieties that had high methylation tended to be almost completely silenced for that gene, whereas the varieties on the right that were low methylation varieties at that given epi peak tended to have much higher expression. So now we're starting to get to the point where digging into kind of the specific genes and the biology of those genes, trying to get a little bit more mechanistic with it. Um, we found that there's this really cool MADS transcription factor that's been pretty well studied in maize, and we find there's a lot of variation in methylation of its intron, one of its introns, and that methylation within that intron is highly correlated with plant height. Varieties that have high methylation in that intron tend to be much shorter than individuals with low methylation in that intron. Um, for all these, we'd like to go back because there is a lot of publicly available data and kind of confirm those results with whole genome by sulfide sequencing. We didn't do that sequencing. This is publicly available, kind of just quick check-in. And so far, we've always found our results lining up between the two. All right, so conclusions. Um, Oxford nanopore sequencing kind of allows us to rapidly detect not just natural genetic variation, but also epigenetic variation. And a lot of this epigenetic variation seems to be correlated with some really cool agricultural traits. Then once we kind of have identified some of these peaks, we're finding that machine learning algorithms allow us to build these new predictive models that greatly improve upon genetic only models. So from here, um, we're looking to kind of take these epi peaks that we've identified and use them as markers for plant breeding, but also targets where we kind of are looking to go in change methylation at those epi peaks and see how that affects plant phenotypes. With that, I'd like to thank you.